Welcome back. In this video, let's take a look at our last input component, which is the autocomplete component. And when it comes to autocomplete, there are quite a few props. So in this video, we are going to only focus on the basic usage and I will leave the rest for you to explore based on the requirements you have in your application. Let's begin by creating a new file in the components folder. MUI autocomplete.tsx Within the file, I'm going to create a new component. At the top, I'm going to import the stack component and use it instead of the div tag. Let's add spacing is equal to 2. Let's also set a width of 250 pixels. Now for an autocomplete, we need to import two components, autocomplete and text field. Once the components are imported, let's add the JSX. Within the stack component, invoke the autocomplete component. This component has two mandatory props. The first is options, which should be an array of strings. We don't have one, so let me copy paste an array at the top. So skills is an array of five strings, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, and React. Assign this skills array to the options prop. The second prop is render input, which renders the input. This is equal to an arrow function. We return text field. The function receives parameters, which we are simply going to spread over the text field component. Curly braces, dot dot dot, params. Let's also add a label is equal to skills. Let us now include this component in app component and head to the browser. You can see the autocomplete component being displayed. This autocomplete behaves like a combo box. When you click inside, you see the options. Select an option and the value is shown. You can also clear the selected value. If you start typing in a few letters, let's say script, we see the list of suggestions. You can select one option from the list of suggestions. Let's now go back to VS Code and track the value in a state variable. At the top, import use state from React. Within the component, create a state variable. Let's call it value, set value, and the initial value is null, and the type of the variable is going to be either string or null. Now, on the autocomplete component, we add the value prop and assign the state variable to it, and we also handle the onChange event. So on change, and let's define this in line. This is going to be an arrow function where we call set value. Now this arrow function receives event, which can be of type any, and new value, which can either be string or null. Pass in new value to set value. Let's also log the state variable to the console. If we now head back to the browser and select an option, you can see the value being logged in the console. This is the basic usage of the autocomplete component. Now the autocomplete we have right now will not allow you to enter free text. So if you type in a random string, and press enter, it is not accepted. To allow free text, 
you can use the free solo prop. So on the autocomplete, add free solo, save the file, head back to the browser, type in ASD, press enter, and you can see the value is now ASD. This scenario is suitable for autocomplete like Google search. For the second example, I want to use the autocomplete again, but with a different structure of the input data. The autocomplete component can accept either an array of strings or an array of objects which contains a label key. So let's see how to make it work with an array of objects. First, I'm going to define a type. So type skill is going to be an object with ID, which is a number, and label, which is a string. Next, I'm going to create an array using the existing skills array. So const skills options is equal to skills dot map. This is going to accept a function which returns an object. As parameters or arguments, we have skill comma index. And in the object we return, we're going to have a property called ID, which is equal to index plus one, since index starts at zero. And label is going to be the skill itself. Skill here refers to the string and the skills array. Next, I'm going to duplicate the autocomplete component and remove the free solo prop. For options, I'm going to specify skills options, which is an array of objects. When we do this, we also need to update our state variables. Let's create a new one. Let's call it skill, set skill, and the initial value is null. But this time, the type is skill or null. Skill here is the skill we have just created. Now, update the value prop to skill, and on change, new value is going to be of type skill or null, and we call set skill passing in the new value. Let's also log skill to the console. If you now head back to the browser, refresh, you can see initially skill is set to null. Choose HTML and we now have an object assigned to skill. ID is one and label is HTML. TypeScript and we can see the changed value. When you start working on a real application, you'll realize this is a more practical usage of the autocomplete component. All right, this is where we are going to stop in this video, but the autocomplete component is really robust and there is a lot you can do with it. You can change what is displayed for each option, load the options asynchronously, group options under a heading, select multiple values, etc. I'll leave that for you to explore when you have the time. With that, we conclude with the list of components related to forms and inputs. Starting next video, let's take a look at the layout and surface related components in Material UI. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.